Hello everyone, Josh Burnett, BCSE Communications Coordinator here. On this week's We Are BCSE podcast, it is East North Week, or Northeast Week, depending on which school or uh, which part of the school system you're a part of, but it's Rivalry Week regardless. And uh, this week for the podcast, we're actually going to be um, showing you a recent interview of a few of the coaches, football specifically in soccer, that participated in a Columbus Rotary Club uh, roundtable. Uh, Sam Simmermaker from 1010 WCSI emceed the event, and so we're going to upload that for you, and I hope you enjoy uh, this We Are BCSE podcast, and I hope that you've had a great week on Crosstown Confrontation Week, as I think Sam calls it. Uh, but regardless, East North, Northeast Week, it's a great week at BCSC. Well, hi, and a pleasure. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Rotary's annual Rivalry Week 2021 Roundtable. And it is Crosstown Confrontation Time in the city. Get ready for the Bartholomew Brouhaha. And we have soccer and football coaches first. And to set the stage, for the East and North soccer soirees, ladies teams coaches first. And remember East and North matches Wednesday, boys on Thursday, girls on Wednesday at the new BCSC digs. So Columbus East girls soccer coach, Dr. Ilya Schwartzman. He's beginning his 17th year as head coach, if our math is correct, 20th overall. His daughter, an associate professor at the University of Cincinnati. His son is directing a show at the Murat Theater in Indianapolis currently. And it's going to run, I believe, for another several weeks. Folklore has it that after every soccer win, the coach heads immediately to the fridge for a generous dollop of ice cream, always topped with caramel syrup. Favorite baseball team is the Cubbies. His first car, a 1979 Olds Cutlass, equipped with AM stereo, no AC, however, and it was good for 200,000 miles. Columbus East girls soccer coach, Dr. Ilya Schwartzman. Thank you very much, Sam, for this wonderful introduction. And thank you once again, Rotarians, for inviting us here. I would be I miss uh, if I didn't say thanks to all of you for supporting soccer in Columbus. I want to express my personal sincere thanks to the Columbus East administration for the last 20 years of support uh, of uh, our girls soccer program and the boys soccer program. Just wonderful experience. Uh, thanks BCSC for providing us this wonderful facility uh, that we're about to um, entertain tonight. Um, against Bloomington South. And um, so before I, I kind of talk a little bit about our team, um, I have to tell you that um, um, everybody knows that I exercise a lot and um, I got a new dog and I named him 10 miles. Now I can tell everybody that I walk 10 miles a day. Um, so the other thing I will mention, uh, Sam mentioned uh, that my son is directing a show. He has been in theater for quite some time, and we're really proud of him. He's, uh, he's doing a, a show that's part of Indie Fringe. So for those of you who are theater enthusiasts, uh, see if you can hit the Indie Fringe for the next few weeks. There's a number of shows, and he's got Climate Follies that are playing at New Rock Theater right now. So Columbus East program has, uh, has been... Uh, uh, women's program has been very successful over all of the years that I've been part of and before me. Uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, we're led by our three senior captains and there are our three seniors and that's uh, Gabby Schutz and uh, Kathleen Sodell and Grace Wiltsey. Uh, just wonderful leadership uh, on all fronts. Uh, we have superb athletes. We also have superb students. Um, over the years, uh, we have maintained our team GPA well above uh, 3.7, uh, pretty consistently year after year. We have had uh, a ton of academic all states. Last year, all of the seniors and all of the juniors were academic all states. So we're incredibly proud of our accomplishments on the field and in the classroom. Um, 
we are um, certainly uh, fired up for, for this week. Uh, we have a tremendous matchup against number six, Bloomington South. Uh, and then uh, we're going to be facing Columbus North on Wednesday, and they're ranked uh, uh, seventh as uh, of this morning. Um, so that's a pretty easy schedule for us this week. Um, so, um, you know, we are, we are looking to the challenge. The one thing that uh, my team uh, has always done, they kind of uh, adopted the mantra of their coach is uh, one is never give up and always give 110%. And we never, never quit. So no matter who we face and when we face them, uh, we're going to be fighting to the very end and uh, we're going to put up a challenge. Columbus North has always been a challenge. They have an incredible program. Uh, they're one of the best teams in the state. Uh, they feature one of the best, if not the best, uh, player in, uh, female player in the state. Uh, she's always been a challenge to handle and uh, uh, our hands are going to be very, very full. Um, throughout the, the night. Um, so I will promise you a great entertaining uh, match. Uh, we will battle and we will uh, uh, aim to prevail. Our goals are very simple. Uh, we are going to compete in every match. Uh, we're going to aim to win the conference and we're going to aim to win the sectional uh, and uh, move on into the tournament. So those goals have always been throughout the years and will continue to be. Uh, and we uh, really excited for what's about to happen this week. So thank you once again for inviting me and I will let other folks talk. Thank you. Doctor, thank you as always. Beginning a third year as Columbus North girls soccer coach is David Young. He's a former Franklin High School girls soccer coach and more recently served as an assistant boys soccer coach at East. His oldest of four children who studied at Liberty is North JV girls soccer coach. Favorite baseball team is the Giants and his first car, a mid 80s VW Rabbit. Columbus North girls soccer, David Young. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks Sam for the introduction. Uh, thank you Rotary Club for hosting us again this year. Uh, for the 21 Rivalry Week event. Uh, that's difficult to say. If you haven't already, say it five times and uh, see how difficult it is. Uh, this is a special week for Columbus, uh, one that I've grown uh, to love over the years. Uh, this week is just one reason why my wife and I decided to move our family to Columbus last year. Uh, we've loved our first year in Columbus and look forward to many more years of enjoying this wonderful city. Uh, as Sam said, I'm entering my third year as the women's coach at North. Uh, the, the, ladies, the ladies have done a fantastic job over the last two years and looking for many, forward to many more. Uh, over the last two years, this group has totaled a combined record of 33 wins, five losses, and two ties. And they've amassed over 1,000 hours of community service as a program. Uh, 2020 was definitely one for the record books for us. Uh, we were conference champs, sectional champs, regional champs, and a trip to the Final Four. Uh, with an overall record of 18-2-1, uh, we had one of the best seasons in school history. Uh, 2020, uh, we also saw some things um, off the field as well that were some great achievements. Uh, team GPA last year was a 3.92 on a 4.0 scale. Uh, we won the National Team Ethics and Sportsmanship Award. We had 17 All-State Academic Honors, six All-Conference Honors, four All-State Player Honors, uh, and uh, as Doc mentioned, a very, very talented athlete in Jenna Lang, uh, who was uh, rewarded as a high school All-American athlete last year. Uh, we tallied uh, 88 total goals uh, for the season and only gave up 15 in our 21 matches. Um, the most important stat that I look at as a head coach, uh, especially whenever you're talking about the community, is service hours. Uh, last year, uh, we tallied 550 hours donated to the city of Columbus. Uh, we strive to set high standards, high expectations for our players, both on and off the field. And we believe we accomplished that in 2020. Uh, 21 in 2021, uh, we've put our focus again on the community. We've already accomplished so much uh, focused uh, in hosting free soccer clinics to the area youth players. 
Uh, the goal is to set, uh, get as many girls playing the sport that we all love. Uh, we averaged about 50 girls uh, per free youth clinic. Uh, we also had a cleanup day at Mill Race Park where we had over 40 North girls soccer players um, picking up the park and making it beautiful. Uh, work day at Love Chapel. We had 35 plus girls uh, working together to support the community. Uh, and one final event that we had was uh, we supported a local small business, uh, kind of flooded them with our players and, and gave back that way. Uh, and finally, 2021 has shown to be a great year for us on and off the field. As Ilya mentioned, uh, we're currently ranked number seven in the state of Indiana. Uh, national polls will come out shortly and hopefully as, as last year um, will be the same this year and we'll also be ranked nationally. Uh, this year we had 21, I'm sorry, 51 players come out for tryouts this season. Uh, 19 of those players were freshmen, and we ended up keeping 16. Uh, we kept 42 players overall, which we feel like is a bit much, but uh, for a healthy program, we feel like we, we needed the, the higher number, and we felt like that they can all give back to our program to make us better. And then finally, uh, Columbus North has a goal to be a first-class uh, first class in everything we do. There's a lot of pressure and eyes on programs at the top. We feel we can be great on and off the field, and we want our community to embrace and support our goals. Our goal is to create a team that plays and and are excited about players are excited about joining. Uh, one that youth players look up to and strive to be a part of when they get to high school. Many of our high school players remember the days when they would go to high school matches. And they still remember those athletes they looked up to years ago. That is what we want to embrace. And we want to make that memory special for youth players. Again, thank you for hosting this event and allowing me to take the time to talk about North Women's Soccer. The Rotary Club does great work in the community, and we look forward to many more great years with all of you. Thank you. David, thank you. Next up, Josh Gunsher who took over the head coaching reins at Columbus East Boys Soccer a couple of years ago. He was an assistant coach at East for over a decade and nearly 20 years coaching soccer overall, six at Hauser. Josh and his wife are endeavoring to visit as many national parks as possible. 12 in 2018, as a matter of fact. Sadly, this year, Indiana Dunes was it. Josh hails from Minnesota, and as a result, his first car, a 1988 Chevy Blazer, black and purple, was dubbed the Purple People Eater. Why are we not surprised? His favorite baseball team, no surprise, the Twins. East Boys Soccer, Josh Gunsher. Thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, thank you, everybody, for uh, allowing us this opportunity to come on and uh, talk to you guys a little bit about soccer. Um, obviously, not the, the biggest sport in the U.S. at this moment, but uh, we, we like to see it continue to grow, uh, especially in the community. Um, I think our programs have shown a lot of success um, over the years, and, and we're really grateful that the community has embraced our sport because uh, obviously we have a, a lot of passion for it, uh, and that's why we are part of coaching high school sports. Um, we've had a lot of success over the last, you know, six or seven years. We won lot four of the last six sectionals, uh, won the regional two years ago, um, and made it to the final four as well. Um, we have a healthy group of seniors this year, uh, led by our four captains, um, including Coach Young's son, Branson, a great leader for us um, over the last four years. Our all-state all forward, Chris Quisenberry, um, just a phenomenal player uh, who, who's been a varsity player for the last four years, uh, an di all-district player in Corbin Hatcher. Uh, plays in the back for us, and, and uh, an outside back, Weston Romine, um, who is involved in a lot of other community uh, things, in, in including 4-H, where he, last week, he missed a practice because he was uh, 
driving tractors, had a tractor driving contest uh, up at the state fair. So uh, pretty well-rounded group and, and provide a lot of leadership for us. Uh, we're looking forward to an exciting season. Uh, we're currently one, one and one. Um, played some tough competition on Saturday uh, up at Center Grove, including against uh, the new uh, giant uh, Elkhart High School. Um, we combined their two high schools and made a, made a giant one. Uh, we're pretty talented and we were very lucky to be able to uh, have that competition and make those connections throughout the state. Um, we always look forward to this match. Uh, because the, the North and East match brings out the best in both teams. It doesn't matter where we are in the season. We could, both teams could be 0-10 at this point. Uh, and this is going to be an entertaining match to watch. Um, it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the season, especially having it so early on. Uh, and we know where we need to be by the end of the season. Uh, based on what what happened in this match. So we're always looking forward to it. The boys have all played together growing up and uh, they already have those connections with each other. Uh, the coaches all know each other and uh, we we talk and, you know, it, it really is just a, the best environment for us. And we're really looking forward to actually playing uh, in this new complex and, and seeing what this rivalry looks like in this new BCSE complex, which if you haven't seen it yet, uh, is gorgeous. Um, I would strongly encourage you to, to come catch a match to see any of the teams this year, uh, just to see this, this um, complex that BCSE has provided for our athletes. Uh, like the other coaches have said, uh, we focus on academics heavily as well. We're, we're uh, traditionally around a three, seven, um, on out of four, um, with academics have a variety of, um, academic all state players as well. Uh, we really looking for a well-rounded athlete and a well-rounded kid to, to leave our program. We're also very student centered or player centered as a program. Uh, the kids set all the goals for the year. The kids set the expectations. They set the rules and they come up with the consequences at all, uh, as well. Um, it's pretty much hands off for us and, and they run it. It's, it's about them and it's not really about us. Um, we're there to facilitate and hopefully uh, they learn a lot from the process and uh, we're, we're just happy to be part of it and, and happy to share our passion with the sport. Um, so once again, thanks. We, we really appreciate uh, you allowing us this opportunity. Um, and we're looking forward to hopefully seeing some of your faces this week uh, in the gate at the games. Thanks. Josh, thank you. Columbus North boys soccer coach Andy Glover is unable to be with us today. Andy teaches school at Seymour. Couldn't get away. Stepping in for coach Glover is assistant coach Sam Lavelle for a second straight year. Sam is a Columbus native played soccer for North, played two years at Manchester and finished up his degree at IUPUC. He is a Cub fan. First car, 2007 Honda Civic. It has broken down twice, he says, but otherwise has been a good car. North assistant boys soccer coach, Sam Lavelle. Hi, uh, nice to be here. Uh, first thing I'm going to say is I teach at Southside, and my office is perfectly located across the hallway from the kindergarten bathroom. So if you hear some yelling or anything, it's the kindergartners using the bathroom. So if you hear that in the background, I apologize. Uh, excited to be here again. Uh, as Sam mentioned, Coach Clover couldn't step away from his classroom for today, uh, but he wanted me to give his best to all of you. We're really excited about this season. Last season was an interesting year because we had a lot of young kids. We were playing a lot of freshmen, sophomores on our varsity team. But overall, it finished as a good season for us. Uh, we finished with a 7, 6, and 4 record, and that's with playing eight teams that were in the top 20 in the state. So we play a really tough schedule and try and get the best out of our team so that way when the tournament comes around, we're used to tough competition and tough games. Uh, 27 different players last year featured in varsity games, which was 
a big deal for us. So we have a lot of experience returning this year. Uh, last year, we had six all-conference accolades and six academic all-state accolades given out. And then returning this year, uh, three of the six all-conference players are returning, eight starters, our top five goal scorers, and our top three assist leaders. So like I said, we played a lot of freshmen, sophomores last year, and this year they're coming back. And so we have a lot of returners, and so we're really excited about this season. So far, we've played three games already, and we're 3-0, and played some tough competition already. So that was good to see. Uh, as Josh said, we're really excited about the Northeast game. It's a special time because all the kids grew up playing with, the, with each other. They know each other really well. The coaches know each other. So it's a special atmosphere to be able to play in. And so it's always fun time and fun to be able to play. And that's about it. Uh, we encourage you guys to come out and watch us. We're really excited about playing at the new facility. So please come out and support uh, Columbus soccer as a whole. Thank you, Samuel. Well, on to the grid sport. Columbus North football coach Tim Bless is beginning year number 22 at the helm of the canines. How time flies when you're having fun. Well, this fall, he is following his senior daughter at IU. She'll be doing her student teaching in elementary education. Also a freshman football player at UND. Coach Bless is a Cincinnati Reds fan. It's been a happier season for him so far. We all remember his first car, that baby blue Ford LTD with a driver's side window that wouldn't go down. <laughs> Columbus North, football's Tim Bless. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, as a long-suffering Reds fan, this is the latest in the summer I've paid attention <laughs> to MLB in quite some time. So hopefully we can keep a hold of that wild card spot um, and your cards will be back on top soon enough, I'm sure. Thank you again, Rotarians and guests, for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Columbus North Bulldog football family. Uh, our program motto, the dog pack, you've probably seen signage, T-shirts, et cetera. Uh, is a spinoff of the Rudyard Kipling poem. I know football coach talking poetry. I'm trying to break stereotypes here. The strength of the dog is the pack. The strength of the pack is the dog. Something we talk about on a weekly, pretty much daily basis about the importance of the individual within our program, but also, you know, the big picture role that it's all about the team. Uh, our program mission is to use the great game of football to teach the pursuit of excellence and build complete men. Certainly we wanna be successful on Friday nights, but it runs a whole lot deeper than what the scoreboard says uh, each and every week. Since we've last met, here are some praiseworthy happenings. Our 2020 Bulldogs were quite successful, finishing six and three and winning the Conference Indiana Championship. 19 of those, excuse me, 10 players were named first team all conference and another three were named honorable mention. Eight of last year's seniors were named Academic All-State. That's a total of 98 in our program since the year 2000. Students first, athletes second. 19 of our former Bulldogs are currently on college rosters, uh, playing the game collegiately as we speak. Uh, wish them all the best in, in their continued success at the collegiate level. Uh, they certainly are making Columbus North High School and Bulldog football proud. Though we had a rough out in week one, uh, we're still optimistic in team 2021 and plan to improve every week. We're led by 17 seniors, including our tri captains, Luke Hammonds, Neil Likens, and Jackson Scruggs. Uh, like everybody has spoken so far, you know, we're very much looking forward to, to this week and week two versus the Olympians. What a fun challenge uh, to play one of Indiana's finest programs. Add to it the magnitude of the crosstown rivalry. We get to play in front of a packed house again. You know, that was certainly uh, a missing ingredient last year that unfortunately last year's seniors didn't get to experience. Uh, this year's teams, I'm sure, are so looking forward to it. And it's really high school athletics at its finest. I'd urge all of Columbus to come out and watch a great high school football game Friday night, then come back on Saturday morning and watch the JV and freshmen do the same. And if I may, a quick public service announcement, football participation numbers at all levels are not near where they once were in Columbus. 
football is safer than ever and is an incredible team sport. So any opportunity you folks have uh, to talk up the game of football, to encourage uh, youngsters in this town who might not have found a fall sport or a sport to, to belong to, talk up the game of football. Uh, we need to get the numbers of our sport back up where it belongs. And, you know, certainly contact Coach Vogel or myself if you find opportunities where we can promote our sport. Thank you in advance for your support this season. And good luck to all fall sports teams. Go Columbus. Thank you, Tim. Well, Columbus East football coach Eddie Vogel is no stranger to all of us. Assistant coach under Bob Gaddis for almost two decades. Eddie hails from Evansville. And he went to Wright's High School. No, he did not play football there under Coach Gaddis, but his brother did as quarterback, hence the acquaintance. He's a diehard Atlanta Braves fan, and his first car, CJ7 Jeep, with rusted out floorboards. It was faded red or orange, nobody knows for sure, with that big eagle on the hood. East grid mentor, Eddie Vogel. I want to first off thank the, the Rotary Club for, for, for the invite. Um, obviously, this is my first uh, uh, year um, in this rivalry game as this role, but I was talking to my wife this morning, and I think uh, this will be my 20th uh, Northeast football week. And uh, um, we've got, uh, you know, one thing that's significant maybe that uh, the other coaches um, don't have that's really significant to me is that we have actually have two North Week babies. Um, two of our kids were born during North Week. So um, it's pretty, uh, you know, we, we celebrated a birthday yesterday. We'll celebrate another one tonight. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty special week um, around our household. Um, I know uh, all the coaches here um, will agree that, uh, you know, being able to coach is really a family affair. And, uh, um, you know, without the support of your family, um, it's, it, it makes it pretty tough. So, um, you know, th th this is a, a pretty special week for me. Um, Coach Bless, that was a great PSA about, uh, um, you know, you know, encouraging folks to play football. Um, I think our numbers are kind of trending up a little bit, um, but definitely not what they what they once were. Um, you know, we've got a pretty young football team. I'll give you a little information about our team this year. Um, we graduated 32 seniors last year, um, and a lot of those those players were two and three year starters. And then we also graduated Coach Gaddis to, to retirement. Um, and so uh, there's been a lot of holes to fill. We've got Malachi Parks. Uh, playing in Hanover from last year. He was our quarterback. Um, our tailback, Mark McDonald, is out at uh, Fort Scott Community College playing. Grace Bergman is doing track over at IU. Parker Harrison, one of our DBs, is playing baseball at Wright State. Um, we had a um, one of our offensive linemen, Hunter Nicholson, that played in the North-South All-Star game. So, you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is, you know, we accommodate um, multi-sport athletes and really value, um, you know, players as part of our program playing multi multiple sports. Um, uh, this year, um, we're led by uh, really six returning players that, that, that really have, have seen significant varsity action. Um, senior Josh Ludicky and Ashton Hartwell um, are going to return to the offensive line for us. Um, Jaden Dernal um, will join them at offensive line, and he was a defensive starter last year. Uh, and then Trice Villarreal saw quite a, few, uh, quite a bit of action um, at tailback last year um, as well. And then two returning, returning starters on defense, junior Chase Harrison, who's really been a three-year starter for us. Um, playing middle linebacker as a freshman because of injuries and um, uh, junior Jamal Starks. So, um, you know, we're, we're a young football team. Um, we did not have the result either um, that we wanted last week, um, but we talk to our guys all the time about inexperience is not an excuse. And so, um, you know, we want to uh, we want to have con continued improvement week in and week out and uh, with the goal of playing our best football in November. Um, so we're super excited about the opportunity to play against uh, uh, Coach Bless and the Bulldogs. Um, you know, the game – um, I think Coach Lavelle said, you know, all the players know each other in Columbus. I, it's a great environment, great community, community support um, and uh, physical and intense. Um, you know, but the other thing that kind of seems to happen, and Coach Bless will probably um, agree to this, it kind of seems like the ball, uh, the, the, the game's decided by the team that has the football last. And so um, they're very entertaining games and, and we're looking very, very, for, very much forward to, uh, to playing Friday night. Coach Vogel, thank you, sir. We'll see you Friday. For some final rivalry week hype, we can call on our esteemed athletic directors. Josh, I don't know if you can do a split screen or not, but first 
We welcome Columbus North AD, Brian Lewis. Brian hails from St. Louis. Bless his heart, he is a St. Louis Cardinal fan. His first car, a Buick Regal that was not in very good shape. And Columbus East Athletic Director, the pride of Thorntown, Indiana, and home of Stuckey's Restaurant, Pete Hughes. And Pete's first car, a black 1986 Beretta, sadly, with a leaky sunroof. Messrs. Lewis and Hughes, front and center. I don't know if Brian wants to jump in first or not, Sam. So you tell me who you want to speak first. I had envisioned a double dip, but go right ahead. You have the floor, Pete. Well, again, it's it's a very challenging week um, for for the school that hosts. And this year, I guess Columbus East is blessed to hope to host. So we're going to try to do our best to get things off and running well. Uh, with the new soccer complex, we've, you know, we certainly have tried to cross all the T's and dot all the I's to make sure we can get fans into the stadium um, and, and go from there. Um, so, so again, I just, I'd like to thank, and, you know, when you start thanking people, you're always going to forget somebody, but uh, Dr. Bozeman, Ron Hoskins, uh, Paul Garland, and Greg Ferguson have done a magnificent job trying to prepare uh, and get everything as game ready as we can for this uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So um, very appreciative to all their hard work they're doing. And then again, uh, trying to remember what all I need to do for home football on a Friday night with a capacity crowd. You know, last year, unfortunately, we weren't able to do that. So to try to remember the workers we need, manning gates and just the extra help. So trying to dust the cobwebs off on all that. But, uh, you know, these games are going to happen whether I'm ready or not. So I, I certainly hope that I am ready. I will mention that on the football end of things, um, both at Columbus East and Columbus North, uh, pre-sale tickets are available. I can't encourage fans enough to stop by, whether it's Columbus North or Columbus East, to get your uh, pre-sale tickets um, because lines do get very, very long. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Brian to see if he has anything to add. Oh, thanks, Pete, and thank you to the Rotary uh, Club for having us. Um, it, obviously, uh, last year was my first year, but it seems like this is a, a really my true first year with East not being able or the rivalry not being the way that it has been in the past. So I'm really excited to see you know, how things are. People talk about the, the crowd of the, the neck the magnitude of, of the football game and the soccer games, the tennis games, everything that, that we uh, compete against each other during the rival week. So I'm just really excited to see our kids compete. Our coaches have done a really great job to um, prepare our kids for, for this uh, event. And I think that all of our coaches will do a great job of coaching our kids this week. And I'm just um, super excited to see how things turn out. Thanks, Brian. As noted, even more rivalry week battles are on tap this week. Tomorrow, boys, or boys tennis, 415 at North. Also tomorrow, cross country, 530 at Sarah Land. Wednesday, girls soccer, BCSC Complex, varsity at 7, JV 530. Thursday, boys soccer, 7 o'clock at the complex for the varsity, JV at 530. And then, of course, the pigskin scramble contest on Friday night. We know about Saturday, as Coach Bless mentioned, ninth grade football at 10 o'clock at North. JVs will play at noon on Saturday. We have principals of the two schools with us, and I don't know if they want to say a word or two, but I'll bet they might. From Columbus East, Mark Newell, and from Columbus North, David Clark. Mark, are you there? Yes, Sam, I'm here. Uh, yeah, I'll say a quick few words. I usually don't talk at these events because, again, it's on the – the coaches do all the hard work. The coaches and ADs, they're the one that are putting their heart and soul out there for the kids, and we really appreciate all their support and also support of the community. 
Um, again, time and time again, talk about the soccer complex. That is first class. Excited about showcasing that to the community. And again, just it's fun week, lots of excitement. Come out and enjoy it. Thanks, sir. David Clark from 25th and Maple Streets. Thanks, Sam, and thanks, Rotarians. I appreciate this event, this whole, this whole opportunity to, to speak and and uh, the week uh, I came in 2003 to Columbus and um, I had no idea what this week meant, but after 2003 and the week after I sure did. Um, and here's what I, here's what I learned. You know, our kids are uh, great kids, both schools, great kids work hard, play hard. And when it's all over uh, after they've knocked each other around a little bit, they go out and have a pizza together. And that's what makes this community just a really fabulous community. So I appreciate this week. Again, I agree with Mark. Coaches and ADs uh, are the ones that put their heart and souls into this. Uh, I just go hoping to be able to enjoy watching a little bit of good competition all week long. So uh, thanks for the event. David, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Columbus East and Columbus North delegations. Thanks, Rotary Club, for getting rivalry week off to a rousing, rip-snorting start. Have a good day and be a good sports fan.